Baltz families to this week's Sunday story time. Get ready to mark your calendars with this week's news and upcoming events. This is followed by a new story for the week. I can't wait to find out what it is. Then you can practice the mindful minute strategy with our school counselors, Ms. York and Mr. Toy. Stay tuned. In this week's events at Baltz, mark your calendars for Friday, October 28th for our PTA event, Trunk or Treat. It will be held at 6 p.m. at Baltz Elementary School. Come in costume. Trunk or treating starts at 6.20 p.m. Please see the flyer and sign-up sheet with more information that has already been distributed. Hope to see you on the 28th. Marque sus calendarios para el viernes 28 de octubre, evento de la PTA, Trunk or Treat. Será a las 6 de la tarde en Baltz. Vengan disfrazados. Comenzará a las 6.20. Vean el boletín que ya fue enviado. The PTA is holding a candy donation drive from October 10th to October 26th. You can donate any type of candy for our trunk or treaters, which is happening on October 28th. Se estarán recibiendo donaciones de dulces de cualquier tipo desde el 10 de octubre al 26 de octubre para nuestro evento de trunk or treat, que será el 28 de octubre. families and welcome to another episode of Sunday Storytime. My name is Mrs. Coster and I teach reading at Baltz. Tonight I will be reading Zombies Don't Eat Veggies. Mo was a zombie with a deep dark craving. It was dreadful, devious, absolutely despicable. Mo loved to eat vegetables. He grew all kinds of vegetables in his hidden garden. And then in his secret kitchen, he crafted celery, tomatoes, and carrots into delicioso meals that he devoured with delight. Mo's mom and dad did not love vegetables, not one bit. Veggies were yucky, disgusting, chaosco. They were not allowed at the Romero's dinner table. Zombies were supposed to eat zombie cuisine, like brain cakes, brain stew, and brain and bean tortillas. Mo's parents insisted that their niño eat only zombie food. Ready to chase some humans in the marathon next week, mijo? Finger foods, mi amor? Gracias, I'm not hungry. Mo tried to convince his mom and dad to give peas a chance. He sneaked in vegetables whenever he could, but Mo's attempts were fruitless. His parents wanted him to accept who he was, a zombie, and zombies don't eat veggies. Mo knew he did not like zombie cuisine, and he couldn't imagine letting go of spinach or cucumbers or kale forever. If zombies were only supposed to eat zombie cuisine, Mo started to wonder if maybe he wasn't a zombie at all. Day after day, Mo wondered how he could make his parents understand his love of veggies. His tomatoes were tantalizing, his cucumbers crispy, and onions, some garlic, the peppers perfection, a touch of cilantro and gazpacho. Holy aioli, Mo had an idea, his best one yet. Mo grabbed his book of recipes, his fingers flew across the pages until he found it, the recipe for a tomato and veggie filled soup. He was sure the tomatoes would make it look bloody and goopy, just like a zombie dish. His parents were going to devour it. Mo chopped and diced, blended and pureed, perfected and poured. Finally, the soup was finished. Mo carefully shuffled it over to the house for dinner, where he found a feast fit for a zombie. Mo, you're just in time. Try some arm panadas, mi amor. Prime cuts. Mira, I made spicy mayonnaise. Pickled tongue, arroz con spleens. Famoso chili con ojo. Doritos for dipping and arm panadas. I made something for you to try too. It's called blood bile bisque. Bon Appetit gave it five brains. Smells strange, looks delightful. Cinco brains must be delicioso. They dug in. Mo closed his eyes 
and sucked in his breath. This was it. They'd savor the soup. They'd ask for moss. Mo imagined breakfasts, lunches, dinners, snacks, all vegetables. Raw, cooked, steamed, and fried forever and ever. He saw all his dreams coming true until Mo's parents did not like the soup, not one bit. Dios mio, this soup tastes like, like vegetables, yuck. Mo's heart sank into his toes. His plan was a bust. How many times do we have to tell you that zombies don't eat veggies? Maybe other zombies don't eat vegetables, but I do, mom and dad. I'm different, but I'm still me, Mauricio Romero. You're Nino, you're Mo. Mo reminded his parents that he liked chasing humans as they ran in marathons. And he promised he'd always cheer for dad during championship brain eating contests. He also loved doing the zombie shuffle under the moonlight with mom. He was a zombie, a Romero. He just liked to eat vegetables. Mo's parents loved their son and finally accepted that it was okay to be different. They even promised Mo they would eat some veggies for him, but only a teeny tiny bit. The Romeros knew that most zombies don't eat veggies, but they were more than zombies. They were a family. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to tune in next week for another episode of Sunday Storytime. And don't forget to eat your veggies. Good night! Bears, welcome back to another episode of Mindful Minute. Today we're going to talk about diversity. Here I have two jars. The lights inside these jars represent who we are. It would be great if we could see the lights inside all of us, but sometimes we focus on what's on the outside. Like some of us are taller and some of us are shorter. Some of us have straight hair, and some of us have curly hair. Sometimes our differences can come from our families. So some of our families may speak Spanish. So they may say hello. In Spanish, they may say hola. Some of our families might speak German. So when they say hello, they would say hello. These differences make us diverse. Diversity is our differences. What is important to know is that our differences make us special and unique. You may remember wearing orange on Unity Day last week. That's because we were celebrating our differences. Again, we are looking at our differences. We are unique and special just the way we are. All of us have a light inside of us that makes us special. If you look at each other's differences and tear each other apart by saying unkind words, because of our differences, we can't feel peaceful inside. So tolerance means that you accept someone's differences with your eyes and your heart. You can see how we are all alike. Tolerance means that you are at peace with everybody and it's okay that we're all different. So this week, I want you to think about the light that you have inside of you and think about how you are different than others. I would love it if you could share it with me or Mr. Toy in the hallway. Thanks for watching another episode of Mindful Minute. We will see you next week. It's Miss Persani with this week's big question and an update to our weekly big question segment. The big questions have been due by Wednesday afternoons, but we are extending that. The answers to our big question will be due by Friday evening. Also, we're going to start announcing the winners during our Sunday Storytime episodes. So make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on those notifications 
so you are alerted when Sunday Storytime comes out each week. If you are our weekly winner, just stop by the library that following Monday to claim your prize. Good luck! Here's this week's big question. The book Zombies Don't Eat Veggies was filled with so many amazing adjectives. An adjective is a word that describes a noun. A noun is a person, place, or thing. Some examples of adjectives could be the happy dog. Happy is describing the dog. The tired boy. What is describing the boy? He is tired. And there are seven girls. How many girls are there? Seven. Now that you have an understanding of what an adjective is, here is this week's big question. What is an adjective that is used in the book? And make sure to include the noun that it is describing. Here is an example from the story. Mo described his tomatoes as tantalizing. The noun is tomato, and the adjective describing the tomatoes is tantalizing. Good luck, and don't forget to tune in next week to find out if you are this week's winner. Congratulations to the following winners from last week's big question. The question was, from the story, how to catch a witch. The children tried to catch the witch four different times. What was one of the ways they tried? The first way was free broom rebristling. The second thing they tried was to lure her to the dance floor and have the spiders use their webs to trap her. Congratulations to Caleb F. in room 209. The third thing they tried was to trap her by dropping a box from above her head. And finally, congratulations to Siani H. in room 205. The last way they tried was the tunnel of tricks. Great answers. Have a great week. Hey guys, it's Miss Persani. Don't forget to like and share this video. And also, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss another episode. Thanks for watching and don't forget, you rock.